that is much better. All right, we are back on Sonic Revolution with the uh, creative team behind the IDW comics. Uh, where we got Abigail Starling, we got uh, Evan Stanley, Gigi, um, Ian, uh, Reggie, and uh, conducting the panel today is uh, Jason. And I'm going to turn this panel over to him from here. Uh, all oh, right, guys. John. <laughs> John. Oh, John. <laughs> John. It's like, I just. No <laughs> I, I'm so sorry, John. Hear me, but you can't see me. I, I hear you, but I can't see you because nice. technical difficulties. So we're just going to have to run with it. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to turn this over to Jason now. All right, thank you, Shane. Hello, and welcome to the IDW chat at Sonic Revolution. And uh, I was going to mention who we have with me, but Shane was uh, polite enough to do that. Thank you all for coming. Um, we had just ended Evan's run on the uh, with the two arcs, including Chow Races and Bad Nick Bases and Test Run, the last issue which just came out last week. Um, what is uh, for this is so this question is for Evan. What has been like to, taking over the writing helm from Ian for the for the last year? It's been well. It, it, this is the biggest writing project I've ever personally done, um, and just really mostly a psychological challenge for me, kind of getting over myself and uh, believing that I have the skill to do this. Um, and uh, really putting my money where my mouth is in terms of uh, how I want to see these characters depicted and what kind of stories we can tell in the future in the series. But yeah, it's like, but at the same time, like, I'm, I've been working on the comics for a long time. I have been writing for a long time. So nothing is like an, a completely new experience. It's just a larger scale than I've ever worked on. I mean, if you've had your own, like, fan comic going for a long time, the Ghost yeah. of the Future, so that has given you quite a bit of experience in that. Um, okay, this next question is for Ian. How does it feel being uh, back on board, and what projects have you been working on in between? Uh, it's good to be back. It's also been kind of fun to be off for a little bit, because I've been running things for so long. It's neat to be able to read the book. And it's new. I mean, I, Evan and I coordinated, so I know what's coming, but reading the plot synopsis and seeing the final product is different. And it's like, ooh, I get new Sonic comic now, and it's not by me. What a breath of fresh air. So it's just been fun, you know, reading her run and saying, ooh, what would it would be neat to build off of this element, or what can we do over here? It's kind of like the old days, getting back into it. Um, in between... I've been doing a bunch of stuff that I can't talk about yet. It's a whole bunch of hashtag knowing smile. Um, and been working on my original series, which is in the process of being retooled. I'm going to have more news about that in the near future. Okay, so going back on uh, just the previous arc, which just wrapped up last week with the test run. Um, so... Uh, this is for uh, Evan Stanley. Let's get newer uh, readers up to speed. Let's talk about Test Run and specifically Bell the Tinkerer, who seems to have uh, daddy issues, or in this case, evil Geppetto issues in kind of a way. Yeah, well, do you want me to, like, uh, summarize the arc or Bell's character, or what would you like me to? I think Bell's uh, journey is, uh, I mean, we have two different kind of arcs going on here, um, Sonic and Tales and Amy going into this virtual world, but I think the main focus is kind of the side story with yeah, Bell and her, the main, her, the her main character. The main thrust of the arc is definitely uh, Bell's character arc. Um, yeah, uh, Bell is a character that uh, when I started, when I got the opportunity to work on the book, uh, the first thing I sat down and thought about was like, what angles do we have uh, in specifically IDW Sonic that we can do here that we can't do that we couldn't do in any other version of the continuity 
and the first like uh the first thing that hit my head is we have Tinker, which um is a a very new take on like a good version of Eggman. And we didn't get to spend a lot of time with him, obviously, because Eggman has to be around. Um, but I wanted to make that uh, element of the story more ha- have more of a lasting impact going forward and to give Tinker sort of a legacy so that his viewpoint and way of doing things can uh, affect future events. So that's kind of the impetus for Bell's creation. Um, and in Test Run, we really see kind of she reaps what she's sown with going after uh, Eggman trying to awaken some part of Tinker in him or and also kind of not believing that Eggman was what everyone said he was as well as her not fully trusting people like she'd take help but she wasn't telling people what she was doing or what her like real motivations were so that really kind of blew up in her face here, and she had to uh, become more honest. Um, see, it's a Pinocchio thing. Um, become more honest uh, to actually accept her new friends. And this is a big turning point for her where um, she can kind of – now she has to decide what she wants to do with her life instead of just trying to get her dad back. Um, so that's going to be a new direction for her and she can start to integrate into the regular cast and become a regular supporting me- cast member instead of kind of like the focus as she was in the beginning where she was kind of driving. Uh, she was definitely a driving force in Test Run and kind of um, she took uh, quite a bit of focus in uh, Chow Races and Badnik Bases getting introduced there. Right, and I, I could see where she's got a, a, an advantage going forward as in the resistance with the uh, bandits not really reacting to her. Yeah, there's a lot that... of there's a lot of interesting things where it's like she, we've never gotten to play with like a good Eggman robot this way because like uh, Emeril and Gmeril, um, they aren't Eggman robots; they're something else. Um, I guess. Jimmerl, it kind of is, but you know, um, but uh, yeah, he, she's specifically a bad Nick, and that's something new for us to play with. All right, and going off from uh, there, we're going to uh, the latest arc, which is the Zeddy Hunt, and uh, boy, what a, what a way to start off! This has been a great. That was the great first issue of this arc. It is the. Is quite amazing. The Deadly Six are back, and they are deadlier than ever. They, uh, there are some panels where I'm, I was like, ouch, did they, did they kill those people off panel? I'm not sure. So um, I was also happy to see the Chaotix actually being really good detectives and figuring out everything just right off the bat there. So, uh, Ian, would you like to talk more about the Zeddy Hunt? Uh, it's kind of cleaning up my mess. Um, when plotting things out with the old series, I had a really bad habit of doing these extremely decompressed arcs that would go on for months, if not years with subplots planned out years in advance. And that doesn't really come to fruition if the book gets canceled. So, you know, with Neo Metal Sonic, I wanted to, you know, this is, I have one year to tell this story. No, extraneous plot points, no lingering mysteries, just tell the stupid story. Get it done, Flynn. And with Metal Virus, I wanted to you know keep it, again, fairly small and self-contained, except I kept thinking of things and contingencies, so it got a little long in the tooth. And when we finally wrapped it up, you know, happy ending, everyone's reunited, you know, set things up so Evan has a nice, even platform to do her thing, uh, I didn't do anything with the Zeddy, though. They're still out there. That, that's kind of a big smoking gun to just let lie around. So this is coming in and, for one, resolving the Zeddy being out and about, and two, doing some more with them, because they are not the best-received villains in the franchise, we'll say. And yes, I, I like the idea of let, let's just make 
I want to, I want to make people like them. And if I can find a way that I don't mind writing them, I figure maybe I can get it to a point where people go, oh, I will actually read this and not skip an arc. So hopefully I can win some people over, because I've come to actually like Zavok. He is the elegant monster trope, and I can get mileage out of that. The rest should be considered like supporting cast to him, I think. I don't think they're strong enough to stand on their own. No, none of them are really going to be marquee villains. But if they're like Zavok's gang, then yeah, that that's workable. And yeah, they're well, the, the deadly six. They... Zavok was incredible on the bad guys and such. Thank you. But um, yeah. yeah, they're they're the deadly six. They need to not be jobbers. They need to do bad things to people. <laughs> but we also need this to be an all ages book, so we can't see how bad, or it can't get too bad. At least not where you can see. At least not on panel, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, they've gone from these uh, kind of lame stereotypes in Lost World, and what you've done with them has been. Uh, really, really good, especially with Zavik. I've really loved what the work you've done with him. Uh, now, outside of the latest stories coming up next week on Sonic's birthday, June 23rd, we have a 30th anniversary special coming up with several of uh, every, our guests right here working on it. Um, who would like to give us uh, some more details on it? I know, uh, Reggie, you worked on this book as well. Yeah, sure. Well, uh, Ian can always start off because he did uh, write the main story. All right. Um, it was, hey, Ian, do you want to pitch a classic story? And I was like, yes. <laughs> and so it's very much like um, Mega Drive in the past, is I more or less pitched a classic game. You know, what would my dream classic game be? And since Mania set the bar for what dreams can be, you know, I went a little nuts, and I got, like, all of it approved, so I went whole hog, and it's like, I hope the artist can keep up, and Reggie just, oh my god, dude. Well, hold on. So Aaron Hammerstrom did, uh, like, all the pencils and stuff first, yes. and that was insane. Um, yes. I worked really closely with Aaron at the beginning, sort of trying to, uh, we would go back and forth a whole lot, trying to get the look of it the way that we kind of both wanted it. Um, but if you guys seen some of those preview pages and actually like 50 minutes ago, IDW publishing just posted on Twitter, two new panels, one from the fall zone and one from the summer zone that are in it because there's four different zones, seasons of chaos. And you know what the four seasons are, but, uh, yeah, uh, primarily I was the colorist for that story. So I colored all 60 pages, which was. <laughs> that's a lot of pages guys um but it was, it was one kind is of immaculate fun. i i seen it all come together is really cool i i think um when i when i have the whole like file like all the files open and you can kind of see all the preview images it does look very colorful and that does make me very happy and proud um but yeah Everyone did an awesome job. Uh, Thomas and Tracy Yardley did a couple pages, and uh, the new anchor, Matt Froze. Just, it, it's awesome. It's really good. I mean, we got a, it's a, it's not just one uh, book we got. It. I know we have a free comic book day uh, coming out, in, a day issue coming out in August that also has a few extra stories in that. And I guess the, both both uh, those issues in a full graphic novel in October. So there's that to look forward to. It looks like it's going to be pretty awesome. Um, uh, steering off of Sonic for the moment, uh, John Gray, uh, he's one of you know, one of the best color artists out there on the Sonic books. And uh, for IDW, we also work on the Disney side of comics as well. There's, has there been anything new on the world of uh, Disney uh, dubs? Right now, I haven't had any chance to do any Sonic stuff in, in quite a while, actually. I had to take a step back for some personal reasons. Uh, but as far as Disney goes, I did have a few things that were in the, uh, that were in the making just before everything kind of went. Um, 
my one big project that I'm so extremely happy to have been able to do was that I got to produce the English version of the adaptation for a goofy movie. Um, I'm not entirely sure when that's dropping. It's for the uh, it's for Fantagraphics' uh, Disney Afternoon collection, where they're basically taking a lot of the old Disney Afternoon stories that were printed in um, the old Disney Adventures magazine, along with a lot of other stuff that was never oh, brought nice. to before. Um, and I I begged and pleaded <laughs> my editors uh, to be able to to put that story into English to adapt it, and I managed to get everything done um, just prior to all the personal stuff that was going on, and it was it was such a great feeling to be able to do that. I'm still doing work for uh, I have some other stuff that is coming out also under Fantagraphics uh, for a lot of the Disney Masters books. Um, some of it is work that I've already done before and it's just basically being remastered. Um, right now my time is like a little bit spent at least up until up until maybe like a few weeks. Um, so I've been kind of in the background just sort of watching everybody. I hate I wasn't able to participate with the, uh, with the 30th anniversary stuff, but watching what Evan's been doing and watching what everybody's been doing with the 30th anniversary book has just been so nice and what everybody's doing and everybody's just like putting their heart and soul into it and I just I'm really proud and happy of everything that all that everybody's been doing on Sonic right now it, it makes me feel really good uh, yeah I mean pretty much all, everyone here has come from uh, fandom in, in some way or form so uh, this question is for our cover artists like Abigail and Gigi and Reggie you've gone from being a uh, Sonic fans to getting work on the books in some form or another uh, what was the process like for you did you have to audition or uh was it was it some other kind of way um, i already talked someone else go okay <laughs> um let's see well for me um i had already worked on my little pony for idw so when idw announced that they got the license uh within about 30 seconds i was emailing everybody i knew at idw like get me on this book <laughs> um and it was a lot of just throwing samples in um they're probably sick of seeing my portfolio by now over at sega i'm sorry uh but also not sorry <laughs> um a lot of um taking feedback um, improving on it, sending it back, um, and then eventually, uh, I managed to get approved, uh, got that first cover done. It was, that cover was a process, uh, because I'd never worked with Sega before, um, and so there was a bit of back and forth. I'm, I'm not sure, was that before they started doing drawovers? Because I remember getting a lot of really difficult to understand notes <laughs> um that seemed a little bit oddly translated um but I'm glad we kind of who was checking at the time if they could draw or not i think yeah yeah um but uh yeah it was a lot of kind of back and forth um essentially just taking feedback uh and improving upon it um until we found something we were all happy with. All righty. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Did anybody else want to go on that? DG? Yeah. I can't hear. Oh, there you are. Oh, yeah. I got to probably get in the middle for this fight. Hey, honey. Um, <laughs> let me just mute myself. Okay. Um, my process was kind of similar. Um, so when IDW first started their whole comic stuff, um, I got in contact with the editor at the time, and I tried out around April as Dance with the Dream. Um, and it was a lot of like back and forth process where sometimes they would say that like some things were changing and sometimes I didn't. Um, and the early stages at least of the tryout were really hard and difficult like um it feels like with every 
everything that I do, like the first cover I was able to finally get published, um, that was like super cool. And but I wasn't allowed to like color it until the second cover I did. Some weirdo had to color it instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some dude. I don't know. <laughs> So you, you did really Weirdo well. colors, great. <laughs> no, I'm glad we got to. I'm glad we got to collaborate at least once. But now you're doing your own colors, so. It's so funny too, because that particular cover has been like bootlegged like crazy. It's so weird. <laughs> um, but like it's it's been a process where everything, like from every cover that I do, I'm able to do a little bit more. Um, so like, the second co cover I was able to color more. The third cover I wasn't so. It was interesting. There wasn't as many notes this time. It was it was really weird. So I don't know if it was like I was getting better or like a little more understanding of my style. But like, <clears throat> um, and then like recently I did the the IDW like tutorial thing that they're doing on Twitter right now, and um, that approval process was interesting because I had to do a copyright for the first time. So it's like <clears throat> I get to do one thing, but then it's like the next thing. It's like another level of learning for me so uh it never necessarily feels like um i ever stop learning if that makes any sense it's just it, it it's like i know i'm in but like i'm still going and going and going um i'm so sorry if there's like an animal <laughs> crawling all over me come on it's cute okay. it's good yeah it's yeah. cute okay <laughs> but yeah all right before i uh take the if foul over the Q&A. Um, I do want to mention that on idwpublishing.com right now, there is a Sonic 30th anniversary sweepstakes going on. It's, uh, to enter, you simply visit uh, idwpublishing.com slash Sonic and sign up for the IDW newsletter. Just uh, drop them off your email. And they have some great prizes for this. Uh, I think you have up to uh, the winners will be chosen on June 23rd, this Wednesday. So the grand prize, which oh, I am so jealous for whoever gets this, is a custom Sonic PlayStation 5 with Evan Stanley artwork on it, and it looks just incredible. Uh, I, I am so jealous of that. Just awesome. Uh, that will include the Sonic Mania video game team, Sonic Racing, Sonic Forces, a GameStop exclusive uh, Sonic comic, Sonic Plush by Jack Specific, a Sonic 30th Anniversary Special Comic Book, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog IDW Collection Volume 1, the Complete Sonic Trade Paperback Collection, Volumes 1 to 8, Tangle and Whisper Trade Paperback, Bad Guys Trade Paperback, and Sonic the Hedgehog Dice Rush Game. Um, there is All the comics. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so many comics, uh, just... you won't even need that PS5. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the biggest part of it. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, I think when the uh, if we do the physical uh, conventions next year, then Stanley goes there. I'm gonna have her sign my uh, Xbox Series S and maybe my Oculus Rift. <laughs> uh, I, have a, I, have a, I have a little story about the the PS5. Uh, my my trials and tribulations getting that drawn on, which is I. So you know they're sending me a PS5. I'm like, oh jeez, I don't want to mess that up. They're really expensive, <laughs> and I've only got the one. And then uh, you know. I wake up one morning and it's like there's a UPS like alert that says oh your package has been delivered I'm like there's no package here so I go check the uh, yeah. the address that I sent the marketing guy and it's like one of the numbers was off in my address and it's like oh no <laughs> so I had to go hunt down the address and run down the street and knock on somebody's door but like you have a large box <laughs> it's mine please holy cow <laughs> someone yeah, almost I got a PS5 yeah, yeah, I would, I would, I would, I would be freaking out. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I would have had 80,000 heart attacks all at once. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, drawing. It's drawn with just, like, a real ink. And Sharpie, even on that plastic, was smearing. So I was going as careful as I could. That thing is blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. Now, were you able to pencil in at all on that, or was it just pure ink? I was able to pencil, very fortunately. I couldn't have done that otherwise. What I did was, um, because uh, we have an approval process, every piece of Sonic art has to be approved by Sega, and there was no possible way I could do corrections. What I did was I 
did a, tr a graphite transfer of the line art for one of my issue 33 covers. And so I printed that out, put graphite on the back, and then you trace over the lines to transfer the image onto a new surface. And then I inked those lines with. So it is a handmade original art, which is a reproduction of a previously printed cover with some minor changes because, you know, I was there and I changed stuff. Yeah, you never stop learning. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Jen, just uh, let everybody else know there, there's three silver prize winners, which is pretty much all of the books <laughs> in the uh, Sonic Dice Rush game, and 30 bronze prize winners, which is the 30th anniversary special, and the Sonic uh, IDW Collection Volume 1. Now I'm going to go ahead right now and take this over to the panel Q&A, so let me just check out the key, uh, questions here. Hope everyone's been asking some things. Okay, uh, this is from uh, Darkfire Wolf to the IDW team. Will we see uh, nods to the other Sonic media, such as Sonic Underground or Sonic X, anytime in the future? No, those are off limits. Feeling that. Okay, let me see. Can we ever expect to see uh, Mighty and Ray in IDW? Pretty soon. Me? Uh, is that but, a no, knowing it's, it's in the description. Oh, soon. That's uh, pretty good. Uh, there. Um, all right. Is the IDW uh, si series connected to the current Sonic game canon, or is it kind of its own spinoff from Sonic Forces itself? It's... It kind of coexists without being reliant on it. So, you know, if, if something major happens in the games, it's clearly going to reflect in the comic, but it's not necessarily one affects the other. You know, so if Tangle or Whisper were to show up in the games, hey, cool, it all makes sense. If there's no crossover between them ever in the history of the franchise, that's fine too. It, it just do. Yeah. It's also why I get very nervous every time there's a a game announced and we see a trailer. I'm like, oh no, they're going to wreck all our stuff. <laughs> they're going to have to change everything. <laughs> what do you mean they're space aliens? <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, Liz Ned asks, uh, what are some of the challenges that you faced with recent books that you're uh, proud of overcoming? That's a good question have a bit of an eye disease and it's been kind of hard to like look at a screen all day and uh with it kind of going on th this is why i've been sort of like uh putting like a damp cloth on my eye kind of throughout the stream and kleenex and stuff but uh yeah like just a whole bunch of that and uh i think that i've almost got it figured out but uh it sucks <laughs> Also, I don't think we can hear Gigi. Yeah, uh, yeah, we can't hear her. <laughs> uh, to be honest with you, she was talking to earlier, you. I could barely hear what she was saying on there. I think there might be an audio issue. Okay, from Dashiell's, uh, 20% cooler. To everyone in the IDW panel, if you have a favorite uh, moment in the comics, what is it and why? I have to pick one. That's hard. <laughs> Introduction. I'm, I'm so glad that the very last thing I was able to do before uh, was getting to work on the introduction for Big. Um, I, I love Weird that story. That much. Oh! Yay! Yay! Hey, Gigi. Okay. Oh, hey, right. Gigi. But yay! Oh. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Sorry, I wasn't trying to interrupt you. Yes, the big story. No, no, not really at all. Not at all. was really good. Yeah. I loved seeing Tangled Whispers friendship develop. Um, mm -hmm. I'm really glad I got to do a cover for that mini-series. Um, because I love them to pieces. 
uh, and just seeing their them kind of overcome their individual like quirks and differences because uh, they're two very different characters, um, but they they mesh very well, um, like they bounce off each other very well. Um, so um, watching them kind of grow more attached and uh, during the Metal Virus saga when uh, Tangle becomes a Zombot and Whisper is just super torn up about it, I was like, oh my heart. <laughs> Yeah, I really like those two because they're, they're two such diff- different characters and personality. One's an extrovert and the other one's a bit of an introvert, so they're always I'm, fun to see together. I'm kind of stuck between, because my favorite, my two favorite moments of IDW is definitely when, like, Sonic goes super for the first time in the comic, and it's like, the way it's presented was so cool. Like, I love that issue so much. Um and I also really like like everything that has to do with Starline. Just everything he's in, from like the bad guy miniseries to like his introduction. It's like interesting because you'd expect like the first time you see him, it's like, oh, it's just like an Eggman henchman or whatever. But you get to know him more, and it's just everything about him and like a lot of the scenes he's in. He always causes trouble and conflict and chaos, and I just. I think that uh, anything with him is probably one of my other favorites. I think I, think I was thinking it's like I think my fave so far is probably in Tangle and Whisper the scene where after the warehouse blows up and they're sitting on the vault and like Whisper opens up for the first time. Just that mm-hmm. scene, just it cements just the really special connection between those characters. Okay, and maybe not my favorite scene, but one that just kind of popped into my head was in the last annual, where Metal Sonic is looking all, at all the footage of Sonic, and wordlessly is grappling with "I'm supposed to be the real Sonic," and so he dips his hand into the metal virus to become infected because the real Sonic is infected, and he can't be infected because and, he's and a machine. Yeah, and just that one good. panel of him glaring at his hand go, with the frustration of that he can't be corrupted is like oh i love that understated storytelling brilliant such a great like little six pager and um i i'm so sad that people won't be able to see the script for it because caleb did an awesome job like it was literally like paragraphs like a kind of explaining like w- exactly what's going on but it was it was like prose. It was so good, and uh, yeah. Anyways, it's really good. But my favorite part in the comics is comes out next week in the thirtieth anniversary thing. Just guys, it's so good. There's, there's a lot. There's, there's a, a lot, lot. There. and there's a lot of moments, and I can't wait to talk about those moments. But um, you'll see. I'll <laughs> see. Hashtag no one's fun. <laughs> All right. Okay, this uh, next question is for uh, Evan. It's from Nightburn. Uh, which is your favorite character or to, or which character is your favorite to illustrate? Uh, to illustrate, um, I really like drawing silver. Um, uh, I'd say my favorite. Like, I'd say Silver, Amy, those are favorites. Um, Shadow can be fun. He's a little bit tricky to draw, but he gets to do a lot of cool action stuff usually. Um, Tangle has the best expressions in the cast by far. Like, she has the just a huge range, and her face just works really well for it. Um, yeah, I'd say those are my favorites right now. Um, it's It changes. Like, er, people always ask me this, and it's like, sometimes it's, Sonic, sometimes it's Silver, sometimes it's somebody else. Yeah, usually one of the three main Hedgehog boys, and then Tangle, right now. I have never guessed that you like Silver so much. <laughs> okay, okay. And this is also a question for even from uh, Lemon Eyes. Uh, is there a certain part of the Chow races, um, Bad Nick Bases uh, arc that you're particularly uh, proud of? Hmm. 
I just don't want to go. I don't. I don't. What happened? <laughs> what happened to that <laughs> arc? Um. It's so long ago. Uh, there's tricky things where it's like I I'm really proud of the script for uh like Belle's introduction scene, but I really dislike the way I did the art in it. So that's kind of a toss up. Um, I really it's kind of a weird thing, but I really like. I think my favorite moment is actually just uh the scene where like Cream and Amy are just having breakfast in the hotel restaurant and Rouge comes up and she's being cool and sassy and it just it's a really human moment like it's a it's a normal thing that normal people do and it's there's no earth-shattering problems going on and they're just taking their time with breakfast and it's like we don't see that usually we don't have time for that and it was really fun to get to write a story that had room for that kind of moment in it and yeah i'd say that's my favorite thing ruja working with the cast especially because she's such a sharp contrast compared to like cream the rabbit who's always like sweet and innocent but she, you know ruja oh. has her own little style to her ruja is one of my favorites these. to draw too like ruja mm -hmm. is just amazing so <laughs> So, um, see here. If if you can bring back a uh, five minutes, okay, yeah. If you could bring back a character you created from the Archie era or pre or post reboot, who would it be and why? I'm a robotic. <clears throat> Johnny Butterfly. Butterfly. You have behaved yourself this entire time. He Don't you say no now, son. He earned that. He I've had technical difficulties. <laughs> Mama Robotnik is not. I've never perfect. behaved myself in my whole life. <laughs> Mama Robotnik is a blight upon all. Fie upon you, sir. Fie, I say. Again, agree to disagree. <laughs> <Sorry to do>. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. There, we put so much love into the post reboot stuff. I would love if we could just transplant them all, but if we're talking like who would be the easiest to move over by themselves and utilize them again, I'd like to take another crack at Eclipse. Um, yeah. we, we, we'd need a little more latitude on Shadow for that to work, but I don't know. I, I, I liked our goofy little demon space baby. Okay. Yeah, um, Professor von Schlemm. Just don't explain it. He's just here now. <laughs> not gold. I no, I was not gold. Just Professor von Schlemm. He talks about <laughs> gold all the time, but we don't explain that either. <laughs> okay, I got one here from uh, N one one five X for Abigail Starling. Uh, what is your funniest revision to the comics? Yes. I've been waiting to tell the story. <laughs> um, okay, well, this isn't a Sonic-specific note that I've gotten, um, but on a recent cover I did, um, there's a bunch of books, like the characters gets really uh, absorbed into a new book series. And as I was finishing this cover, I have to like, you know, do all the book covers and it's late at night and I just kind of start throwing, you know, puns and random scribbles on all of them. And one of them, uh, has this very Bishonen horse man, uh, you know, like, very old school manga style fancy horse, and it says Fifty Shades of Hay. Uh, and I was like, this isn't going to fly. It's absolutely not going to fly, but you know what? I'm going to shoot my shot. It's fine. <laughs> um, and a week later, I get uh, an email back, and I'm like, and they're like, okay. So we just have this one note, and I'm like, okay, here we go. You have to change the book title. And I go, okay, okay, yeah. Because it implies that the horse person on the cover eats hay. They eat hay in the show. This wait, isn't a my, not a My Little Pony cover. <laughs> okay. Um, but I go, wait, that's that's your reason? <laughs> Can we do Fifty Shades of Nay? And they go, no, you can't do uh, animal noises either. 
I was like, oh, is this some Hello Kitty is not a cat nonsense again? Uh, and yeah, so we had to change the book title entirely, but it wasn't for the reason I expected. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, and this one's you from win. Big Matarino. Uh, it's for every, anybody in IDW. If you can uh, make a dedicated spinoff series for any character, uh, who would you choose? Mama Robotnik. <laughs> <laughs> The Chow. The Chow. Oh, yeah. Chow. Yeah. Okay. A lot of Chow stuff. Chow adventures. Mm. Chow. They need to just give us a Chow mobile game. They would just print money. Just, just let me take my Chow everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's it's sad, but still adventure two battles last time we could race Chow in some form. Give us a Blaze book. Explore her planet. Ooh, yeah. yeah, that'd be really cool. Go book. nuts with that extended I've, cast. I have been ready to write a silver book since, like, 2017. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, like, I would love to have an exploration of, like, Silver and Blaze's world, and then them, they're, like, visiting each other's. Blaze is like, oh, it's on fire, that's cool. And Silver's like, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> you would like it, so I caught it on fire again. <laughs> It's like that website is californiaonfire.com and it always just says yes. Silver lives in California. He actually doesn't live in the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> say, Silver's, a, Silver's a very optimistic character for someone who lives in an apocalypse. You know? He's an optimist, but he's so also a realist. He's very optimistic for someone who lives in California. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think this is going to be our final question because we're running out of time here. Uh, to the IDW staff, will there will we be seeing any more of Whisper's uh, former comrades? This is yeah. be going for even and uh, Yvonne and Ian. I mean, they're dead. They're dead, but we got flashbacks. Who knows? Maybe. I, I guess. Right in, right in, and say you want ghost. Them. Yeah, ghost. Oh, Oda does an one piece. They still get a lot of base. Ghost. Dead. <laughs> a ghost. <laughs> Okay, uh, I think that's going to wrap it up for us. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, we really appreciate you uh, coming on board, and we hope to see you again next year. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having us. Thanks. Yes, yeah. thank, thank you so you. much for coming. We hope to do this again. Uh, okay, guys, coming up next, we, uh, we're going to have the Xylo Cave with Gigi. So uh, stick around. We'll be back in a few moments with Gigi. Good luck, Gigi. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <All right. laughs>